Great. Okay, any speakers on motion number two? No. Sorry. No speakers um, indicating. We'll move on to motion number three. The Economy and Society in the Republic of Northern Ireland. Uh, I call on you tonight to move motion three. Uh, if speakers who are going to talk in this motion want to come up to the front, either seconders or speakers, come up and take the seats in the front, please. We'll speed the conference up a little bit. Thank you. Uh, Bernard Daly of the Unite Trade Union moving uh, motion three. Mr. President, colleagues, comrades, Ireland, north and south, stands at a crossroads. In the Republic, the economy and our people have had to endure the crash landing of the economy as corporate and banking debts became unsustainable and were nationalized, leaving society broke and on its knees. These debts, by the way, weren't caused by the ordinary working people of Ireland. They were caused by the casino capitalists and their cronies in the political parties and their friends in the regulators. The painful austerity necessitated by this strict fiscal straitjacket enforced by the EU resulted in a severe recession, devastating our economy increasing poverty levels, income inequality, lower, lowering workers' pay, and forcing a generation of our young people into emigration. The economy is only now starting to grow, but it's largely a jobless recovery, with workers' pay remaining depressed and unemployment kept low through continued emigration. And indeed, we may be in a statistical recovery, but as I say, for many workers, the recession hasn't ended. And as, it, as has been pointed out by the President and earlier speakers, we are now creating a labour market permeated with precarious employment and in-work deprivation. Yet, to the mainstream, it's as if nothing ever happened and nothing needs to change. Our government continues to peddle the same neoliberal solutions, keep corporate tax low, and that includes employer social insurance, raise regressive taxes, privatize what remains of the public sector, and deregulate labor markets and remove red tape, so-called constricting business growth. Similarly in Northern Ireland, following four years in which 1.5 billion sterling has been cut from the budget supplied by Westminster, this year's budget enforced even further cuts. This year they started to bite into public services in an unprecedented manner. But not content with enacting such swinging and damaging cuts to public services, the parties in the Northern Ireland Executive united in the demand for tax varying powers so they could too lower corporation taxes to the level they are at in the Republic. All at the cost of approximately 400 million sterling in even, even deeper cuts to public ser services which are already at breaking point. And this was the reward the parties got for agreeing the most brutal austerity budget in the history of Northern Ireland. The catalogue of cuts in this year's budget is almost beyond belief. 20,000 public sector jobs, 1,500 teachers and school staff, 200 bus and rail workers, 300 agricultural workers, 80 road services workers, and the list goes on and on. 16,000 further education and 1,100 university places to be lost. What price the skills and education of our future generations? And yet, this is only the first year of many more of cuts. Northern Ireland is only halfway through austerity, and they'll be even more devastating in terms of cuts 
if they lower the corporation taxes there because it will pressurise governments in Scotland, Wales and England to lower their taxes to keep up. And so the race to the bottom continues. But it's not all hopeless. 2015 was the year that people fought back, led for the most part by ordinary working class people. They rose against water charges, they struck against austerity, they protested, they gathered, they spoke, they marched and they sang. Time, delegate. Conference, we demand a different type of economy, a different type of future. We proclaim a better world is possible. And we stand in solidarity with our colleagues in Syriza, the Greek people, and the downtrodden working people across Europe. We believe in an economy which is sustainable, an economy having a focus on growth in core productive sectors, manufacturing, agri-food, renewable energy, construction, an economy with a strong base in public services and world-class infrastructure and services. Sorry, President. No, no, continue, come on. We demand an economy where workers have decent pensions, have job security, guaranteed hours to ensure that they can plan to start families or invest in a home, have access to childcare, an economy where workers have the freedom to join a union and enjoy collective bargaining with employers on the basis of equality. On that economy, we can base a wealthy society, a society where everyone has the right to affordable and secure housing, where they have a public health system free at the point of delivery, where they have the security of a social welfare system to catch them when they fall, a society where you are equal regardless of class, faith, ethnicity or sexual orientation. Such a, a society can find its place in Europe, in a Europe of social solidarity, where no country is condemned to slavery under odious debt. A Europe where trade does not provide the grounds for businesses to avoid regulations or to sue governments who stand for their people. A Europe that welcomes the stranger. Comrades, a better world is possible, but it must be underpinned by a strong, robust and sustainable economy built on a solid productive base, an economy where wages are fair and there's no great divide between rich and poor. I move the motion. Thank you. I'd just like to draw the speaker's attention to the traffic system uh, lights. Green means you're okay, orange means it's a warning, and red means you're out of time. And flashing red means you're really out of time. So, <laughs> okay, the second nurse's name and organization, please. Marie Casey, Unite. Uh, seconding motion three. Conference. I wish to second motion three on the economy on behalf of Unite. Manufacturing is at the heart of our economy. Productive economy activate, activity generates all the wealth in society and places the working class in the unique position where we have the power to transform society in a conscious manner. With our hands and heads, workers create all human wealth. Outside our unions, we are powerless to have a say on how that wealth that we produce is allocated. Today, we are told we live in a post-industrial society. Northern Ireland, once proud manufacturing base, is now a mere shadow of its old self. We've seen the decimation of whole sectors of industry. Gone is shipbuilding, textiles, linen industries. Few of the engineering giants which once dominated the city remain. Manufacturers who want to lay off workers must open their books to the workers. If they're making big profits, then they can't justify laying off workers and they can't tell us they can't afford fair pay. Over the past two decades, the the Republic enjoyed a boom of investment, but all too little was in the real economy and all too much was in a make-believe economy, designed to facilitate industrial scale tax avoidance, giving the country global tax haven status. Precious little was done to build up local supply chains around the FDI corporate giants, 
So when times changed and even lower tax alternatives beckoned elsewhere, it was all too easy to up sticks and relocate. The industries which grew most were primarily those associated with facilitating industrial scale tax avoidance. And when the checks finally bounced, they rebounded onto the banks, leaving the nation on its knees. And yet the lessons have not been learned. The Celtic Tiger period offered the resources to, which the to develop a balanced, productive economy, making the most of our natural assets and strengths, yet no one in government wants to challenge that market. In the Republic, government hopes to return to a course of economic growth based on long fingering to the bank debt, facilitating tax avoidance and finance-driven growth, placing complete reliance on FDI to create the needed employment to stem the massive immigration of our young people. Perhaps more disappointing is the complete and abject ideological bankruptcy of the Northern Ireland executive parties, who seek to replicate the success of the Celtic Tiger era by chasing the rainbow of foolish race to the bottom on corporation taxes. But conference, what investor would want to relocate production to a society which, because of austerity policies, cannot fill the potholes, educate or skill its youth, or provide low-cost energy? Conference, what is needed is an interventionist alternative. We must consider borrowing to invest in the infrastructure necessary for success. Our electricity, our water supply, our transport system, such investment would generate multiplier growth and support a wage-led recovery. We see a central role for the public sector for public enterprises. We have such innate wealth on this island, enough wind and a wave energy to power the entirety of Western Europe. Both jurisdictions could win. Imagine if this capacity was in public ownership with the profits benefiting world-class public services the power sustaining an electric powered mass, public transit system, growing and sustainable manufacturing center. We could show an example to the world and recover our former manufacturing glory. Yet administrations north and south seek competitive advantage in the race to the bottom for in global tax haven sta status, all at a cost of even more brutal austerity. Conference instead, we need to be investing in our young people, their education and their skills. We need a revolution in the workplace. We need a decent work act that will guarantee the right to collective bargaining and end precarious work conditions on a lower out contract. A living wage, a protection from vulture capitalists that can close down enterprises in hours and throw workers out into the street without so much as an explanation. Most of all, we need new strategies to reduce inequality. The Irish economy produces a higher level of inequality than any other European econo economies. High pay for senior managers, high profits for shareholders and low pay for workers. This risks creating another boom and burst in our economy and another crisis in our <coughs> public finances. Greater equality, leads to better outcomes for workers, for business and for society. We must overturn the neoliberal consensus at the heart of Dublin and Belfast administrations and ensure that real steps are being taken to build an economy meeting the needs of our citizens. I urge you to support motion three and commit ourselves to this task. Thank you very much. Obviously, my words of warning went on, fell on deaf ears in relation to the traffic light system. So the two Unite delegates now, two penalty points each. <laughs> um, any speakers on the motion? Seeing none, I'm going to 